A rocket launched from Lebanon struck a football field in the Israeli annexed Golan Heights on Saturday, resulting in the deaths of 11 young people, Israel's army said. It described the incident as the deadliest attack on Israeli civilians since October 7. The Israeli army attributed the attack to the Iran-backed Lebanese militant group Hezbollah, stating that the group fired the rocket that killed the youngsters, aged between 10 and 20, in the town of Majdal Shams. The town has residents who have retained Syrian citizenship decades after the Golan Heights was occupied during the 1967 Arab-Israeli War. The rocket attack followed an Israeli airstrike that killed four Hezbollah members in southern Lebanon, prompting the Iran-backed group to launch a series of retaliatory rocket attacks on the Golan Heights and northern Israel. Military spokesperson Daniel Hagari reported on X social media platform that 11 youngsters lost their lives in the attack, with the emergency service Megan David Adam noting that 19 others were injured when the rocket struck Majdal Shams. Rear Admiral Hagari pledged retaliation in a video message. We will prepare for a response against Hezbollah, Hagar said, highlighting that the rocket attack was the deadliest on Israeli civilians since October 7, when Hamas militants attacked southern Israel, triggering the ongoing conflict in Gaza. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office announced that he would return to Israel, as quickly as possible, from a trip to the United States, where he had met with President Joe Biden earlier in the week. Vasil Bodna, Ukraine's ambassador to Turkey, has said that a ceasefire without Russia withdrawing its troops from the occupied territory will give the aggressor time to strengthen its capabilities and resume attacks on Ukraine. Bodna said this in an interview with Euronews. Many countries have proposed the idea of a ceasefire, but no one thinks about what it means. A ceasefire would mean that 25% of Ukrainian territory would remain under Russian control, and it would also mean buying time for Russia to strengthen its capabilities and resume its attacks on Ukraine, he added. Bodnar stressed that the solution to the problem of Russian occupation, which has been going on in Ukraine for more than two years, lies only in the defense of Ukraine's territorial integrity under international law. Any other proposal should not be taken into account, and that is why we reject it," he said. Bodnar explained that Ukraine's vision of ending the war is unified and unchanged. Our methods of achieving peace are very simple. The withdrawal of Russian troops and the defense of Ukraine's territorial integrity within the norms of international law, and then we can start talking about other possibilities. Referring to the call for a ceasefire made by Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, during his recent visit to Kyiv, Bodnar said that Orbán's ceasefire proposal did not contain any details. He added that Ukraine's desire to join NATO does not intend to provoke Russia or create geopolitical changes, but only to maintain security and lasting peace. NATO is the only institution that can meet the security needs of a modern world, at least on paper, Bodnar said. He stressed that if Ukraine becomes a NATO member, it will be a natural border between other members of the alliance and Russia. Military expert Alexander Kovalenko says Russian propagandists cannot calm down after Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba's visit to China. The phrase, Ukraine is ready for negotiations with Russia, taken out of context, continues to spread across the web. An important addition to the quote, the Russian side's readiness to negotiate in good faith has not yet been observed political observer noted. According to him, it is noteworthy that the Chinese side has consistently supported Ukraine's territorial integrity and has never expressed support for recognizing the occupied territories as Russian. What is important is that Russia is trying in every possible way to push the topic of peace talks on its own terms. To maintain and spread this narrative, it resorts to primitive manipulation as it always does. In this case, its manipulation revolves around the fiction that Ukraine is ready to negotiate with Russia. Kovalenko stated, he believes that negotiations with Russia will be conducted exclusively on Ukraine's terms with an unwavering position on restoring the country's integrity within its 1991 borders.